Welcome to the Four Everyday Leaders podcast. Brandon Faust, Alex Holt here with you today. Alex, tell our guests what this podcast is all about. Yeah, this podcast is all about helping people lead in the everyday spaces and moments of life. And today we have with us on the show, Jason Coldiron. Jason is the president of FreeG Engineered Solutions. Prior to that, he spent 13 years at Citizens Energy Group. His last spot was in corporate development, mergers, acquisitions, uh, and new business creation. He is a husband to Jen, a dad to Dylan, and a grandpa to Aiden. Well, before we get into our conversation with Jason, this episode of the 4 Everyday Leaders podcast is sponsored by Ascend Roofing. The team at Ascend are a perfect sponsor for this podcast as they embody everyday leadership in their business. They're locally owned and operated, and Ascend Roofing has more than a decade of focused residential roofing experience, and they service the greater Indianapolis area. I've personally had Ascend Roofing come out to my house. They went above and beyond my expectations. So whether it's to respond to severe weather, just time for a new roof, uh, reach out to the team at ascendroofingllc.com. Reach out to Ascend Roofing at ascendroofingllc.com. Jason, welcome, man. It's so good to have you here. Thanks, Brandon. Um, you know, you and I, we met um, over, you know, in that time peak 2020. So everything was on Zoom, right? And there was like this leadership development kind of initiative that we were both helping out with. And so there were sometimes, you know, I felt like 20 people on those Zoom calls, sometimes right. like six. Sometimes <laughs> people had their video on, sometimes yeah. they didn't. So we kind of sort of almost met there and interacted on Zoom calls. And then I actually heard you speak at Traders Point, had this uh, leadership conference and um, you were part of this kind of... Um, you know, dialogue that was on stage. And I just was really resonating with a lot of things you were saying. And then Alex was telling me he had this mentor in his life. And I'm like, okay, cool. You have a mentor in your life. That's not me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can handle this. That's I can fine, handle this. <laughs> and, um, and he just started talking about some of the, just how that meant, meant so much to him and how that had been influential to him in this season of his leadership. And then he told me more about who you are. And he's like, we should have Jason on. And I'm like, I think I, I think I met him, know him. So uh, thank you for being here. But also, uh, how'd you end up getting stuck mentoring Alex? Wow. Tell, tell me, uh, tell the savage tale. Savage start to that. So, <laughs> so long story, humbled uh, all of those spots you just spoke about. Um, I'm undeserving of all of them. Mm -hmm. So let's set the stage clearly. Uh, when Alex talked about mentoring, I'm, I'm not sure I'm ready for that yet. Yeah. Um, I'm not used to being the old guy in the room. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I'm there. Brandon, I'm fully there. Um, if, if my picture wasn't on the Zoom call, it's probably because my hair wasn't fixed. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm learning to like, you know, adapt and, and adjust. Um, I met Alex, oh man, it's been probably three years ago, maybe. Yeah. We went through yeah. a uh, cohort at our church. Um, again, they asked me to kind of lead this process management. I said, I, I'm not sure mm. I'm the right guy. I can probably tell them all what not to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, we spent a lot of time talking about what not to we do. Did. Yeah. A lot yeah. of time. Yeah. With, real, with real life yeah. yep. examples of the things I've done that yeah. you should not yeah. do. So, yes. um, so I met Alex there and I was super intimidated because he's a artistic guy. And I'm trying to <laughs> teach process management. And I'm thinking we're going to have this ultimate collision where... He, he's going to tell me the slide deck's wrong, which, yep. he, which he did. Which he did. Um, that it's not <laughs> I clean. I mean, it was like coffee beans and like classic serif font. You know, what PowerPoint delivers. I, I, I grew up, you know, I, I was born in the late 70s. Yeah. So as long as it wasn't like Comic Sans, like you're good, no, right? No That's a step up. Right? Right. Yeah, he yeah. was safe there. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, we went through the process management cohort. And Brandon, I'll tell you this, just with, even though he's sitting here, he was fantastic. Mm. And, and so he took those tools back and deployed mm. them in his team and, Cool. I mean, I was so um, just um, uh, just blessed to watch him mm. take that and, and, and grow it. And so um, then he says, cool. hey, part of my development is this find a mentor. I'm like, yeah, I'll help you find somebody. <laughs> uh, so we're still searching for the right mentor. Um, <laughs> And in, in the, the meantime, mean, having some coffee. That's yeah, awesome. we just casually get coffee. And one thing I want to say that Jason mm -hmm. has said, and this I think sets the tone for your leadership. And one thing I have loved about getting to know you is that when I asked you like, hey, I, I know I want you to be my mentor. And you said like, I don't know if I'm ready to be a mentor. Mm -hmm. I can just tell you all the mm -hmm. things that I've done wrong. Mm -hmm. And you can learn from the mistakes. Yeah. And I think that uh, that was really like attractive to me because yeah. you were willing to share like the good and the bad.
bad in your leadership oh, yeah. and help another leader along the way. And that's been like what I've enjoyed is just as we've dialogued and talked about like, what does it mean to be a leader? How do we effectively lead teams, healthily lead teams? You've just been able to share like the real life experience, yeah. which has helped me in incredible ways in leading the team that I get to lead. And I think that just is the kind of leader that you are is that you're willing to share it all uh, and let someone pick up on what they need mm -hmm. to pick up out of that. You're not like a prescriptive leader. And yeah. I really appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. It's good. And, good and I think there's, words. and I think there's so much in that too, of just um, context over content, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, yeah. and someone staying with you for a while and understanding your context of leadership of life, of your family and, and those people who remain that it, that is the there is more content available to us yes than ever in the last few years but the the people who can understand your context understand your story understand your heart and stay with you in that yeah. in the goods and the bads yeah, right and yeah, be able to yeah. model like and maybe you are you know maybe there's some things in alex's life that he's one or two clicks ahead it feels like then you're like, ah, you know, PowerPoint um, but design then, specifically. Yes, exactly. Uh, maybe a mile, you know, ahead <laughs> right on, on some of those things for us. But yeah. then there's a, Hey, there's, here's three or four quadrants of my life that I could, you know, maybe, maybe I'm one or two, three steps ahead of you or just wisdom has taught me over the years or whatever that I can be bringing to that. So that's, that's awesome, Jason. I yeah. love that. Mm -hmm. love that. So tell us about you. Tell us about where did you grow up? What was life for Jason like growing up and kind of into those middle school, high school years? What was going on? Yeah, that's a good question. So I am a product of something that shouldn't exist. Uh, parents had me at a very young age. It's uh, Midwest. It's the 70s, uh, free love, free drugs, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so parents have me at 17 and 18 years old. Uh, both are now high school dropouts. Um, they were married, they divorced when I was 11. So, and out of that time, I think we were in the same household, maybe two years. And so, you, you know, I don't say that for a tragic story. Um, that was the seeds of like this grit that God mm -hmm. planted mm -hmm. and, um, cultivated in me. Mm -hmm. Um, there's this determination that came out of that. Yeah. Um, if you tell me I can't do it, hold on. Mm -hmm. So, so God has, has been faithful this entire time. And, and the things that have happened since then, mm -hmm. Um, have been a result of his grace as I make yeah. plenty of mistakes and then his opportunity as he, he places me in these positions. And yeah. every time I walk into them, I feel humbled. Um, mm. I feel like I don't belong. Mm. I battle with this imposter syndrome mm -hmm. kind of deal. And, um, and then God shows back up. Mm. And so it reminds me that I'm his kid. And so yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get into some of that formative stuff in the, yeah. in, in the latter part. But yeah, so, so there's this divorce that happens with my parents. Um, father's not really present. And I'll just give you a little indication of the grit that, uh, that kind of lives inside of me. At 13, I um, told my father I was coming to live with him. I, I didn't really know who he was. We meet at this um, hotel uh, conference room. My mom and my stepdad, my dad and his current girlfriend. Um, and I look at him, and this is Christmas break, my seventh grade year. And I say, hey, I'm moving in. And he says, hey, um, we should probably wait until like next year let's get through the school year and it's like well, now my bag's in the car we're doing this and so that this sets mm -hmm. off on this journey um and, and it was god's leading it was an opportunity to get to know who my dad was mm -hmm. um and we go through the high school years um i'm a pretty good student um national honor society top 10 students football work all of those things mm -hmm. Um, everybody expects me to go to college. I've got all these scholarships. I got a couple athletic mm. scholarships, a couple, couple of academic. No one knows how to go to college in my family. Mm. Yep. So yep. I go to work. Um, I turned my back on the scholarship pieces and I went to work for a prison mm. at 19. Mm. Wow. And so you talk about just culturally shifting and changing and um, I spent four years working there. Wow. Um, and again, let's lean back on God's grace. Uh, I learned to work there instead of live there. Yeah. And so that yeah. was a super yeah. formative time for me. And mm. uh, I just had this older guy that just kind of threw his arm around me and said, hey, uh, let me teach you some things about this environment. Wow. Um, and so it was just, a, I, I wouldn't change any of that history yeah. because God was, he, he was just faithful in it. And um, mm. I have never forgotten where, where we started. So yeah. how did uh, a couple questions, you know, now you're in your early twenties, you've been working at a prison, <laughs> you know, tough environment. Right. Right. What kind of set you on the path? You know, how'd you then become the president of this company? 
where did the intersection of Jesus and a relationship with Christ come into all that? Yeah, yeah, that's good, man. So the beginning, I uh, is, is a reflection of a power of a praying mom. So even though my mom was not um, super educated, and she, she's smart, and she later on went to finish high school and a couple mm. college courses and stuff, the she was a just a powerful praying mother, mm. and so she she always covered me in that space and um mm. but that middle school transition to my dad um i just decided the church wasn't for me yeah and so i did all the things right um i found the girls i found the drugs i found all the things um and that's that what came crashing in was i'd rather work at this prison than live in it yeah, yeah. and so it got mm. again god in his grace said hey this is what it could look like uh, it, it kind of sucks. And you literally saw that yeah, every yeah, day, yeah. right? Like yeah. it was unavoidable. Yeah. You're, you're in it. And yeah. This is, this could be your life. Um, were it not for my grace and, you know, intersection. And so fast forward, mm. I, I, I meet this girl. I start dating her. Uh, we decided to get married and decide to have uh, a child. And it, we had some struggles getting pregnant. And as we decide, you know, we find out we're pregnant. Like there was this switch that just flipped. Mm. I mean, I went from a guy that, you know, was mm. just uh, smoking, you know, just completely out of shape. No, I, I, in one week, returned to the church that I had grown up in as a kid, Wow, registered for school. Mm. I went to Ivy Tech, um, stopped smoking cigarettes, mm. and entered a gym. Mm. So, so all in the same week. Big week. <laughs> big, 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 big week. That's big a, week. That's not a light week. Uh, uh, <laughs> Saturday hurt. By the yes. Time you, yes. But, but the, it was a big week. It was just this... Wow. Pivotal change. And yeah. um, God found the opportunity to say, hey, you know, it's time to change a few things around. And so, yeah. and that was it. And so we're, we're in this church mm. for about a year and a half or so. And um, uh, my mother had uh, prohibited me from getting baptized until she knew I knew what I was talking yeah. about. And I, that that mm. relationship with Jesus was my own. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I got baptized in a mm. swimming pool at 21. That's awesome. Mm. Um, and I would love to tell you, I came up out of the water and everything, yeah, yeah, you know, everything yeah, changed yeah, right. and the clouds parted and like all of a sudden Jason's like a great dude. Uh, but that was the beginning of the real sanctification process. Mm-hmm. That's, that's still going on today. Yeah. It still requires a lot of time on my knees and still requires a lot of humility. Um, but that was the pivotal point. That's awesome. That's awesome. How, what got you, you know, as you start taking these classes at Ivy tech, what kind of got you in this path, um, towards, you know, leadership and business and all this kind of stuff. How'd that go down? I am what you would call a reluctant leader. Um, Mm -hmm. And so what happens is I find myself in these spots and I can see the answer. Um, Mm -hmm. I I truly believe that's a God gifting. That's, that's not my own like intelligence. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a mildly intelligent guy. Mm -hmm. The rest is God's gifting. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I find myself in these spots where it's clear some leadership needs to take place. Yeah. And I'm looking around the room and no one's putting their hand up. And so I kind of fall into it by default. Yeah. Um, and that has been the story kind of, mm. I, I'm determined. Yeah, yeah, so I yeah. want to win. I'm yeah. a Enneagram three. I want to yep. win. Yep. I got all this grit yep. and I'm looking around and if no one else is going to do it, I'm going to do it. Yep. Yeah. It, it happens every time like that. Yeah. Right. And I, I wish I could tell you, I set off with this dream to be a CEO. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm a reluctant, reluctant leader. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will lead when the need arises. Mm. I don't always love being the guy to step in it, but it is, I can see it. And I know God has given me the gifting to, yeah. to plug the gap. And so yeah. I'm, I am hesitant to do it, but I end up doing it all the time. How do you, how do you reconcile in that? Because, uh, also Enneagram three here and, you know, find myself, there have been seasons in my life where it, it became this unhealthy thing where it yeah. was like, I've got to jump on every grenade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I've got a, I see a gap. I'll kind of wait and then I'll go. And then I found myself, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm leading all these things that aren't life giving to me, um, that there was a need for it. How do I get myself out from underneath some of this stuff? Or even times when they are things that I like, but, you know, going from here's good to best, right? That yep. doing only what I can do. And I think for a lot of people listening to, you know, regardless of title, leadership, position, whatever, there are those times where we can find ourselves saying, wait a minute, I feel like my plate is so stinking full. Yeah. And I'm doing these things that I, I, someone has to do them right. and I grabbed them, but how do I let go of these things now? Yes. And how do I move towards those things that are, that only I can be doing? What's, what's that been kind of like in your journey, man? Yeah, I'm still there. Um, and so I, I am learning through some other wisdom being spoken into me, uh, to get, just get my priorities aligned. Mm. And so does it please God? Mm-hmm. Does it honor my wife? 
Um, and then the rest all kind of falls yeah. distant behind that. Yep. Yeah. Um, I will run into everything. Uh, I, I love, I, if there's a need, I want to go yeah. do it. Yep. I have an insatiable curiosity. Mm. I like to learn. Mm. Um, I like to compete. Mm-hmm. I, I like it all. Um, but that chasing of good things cost me that first marriage I spoke about. Mm. And so that first marriage ended in a, a, a just a tragic divorce and 13 years in, and it was chasing good things. Yeah. I was an elder at a church. Mm. I was leading a youth group. Mm-hmm. I was teaching at the graduate mm. level. I had a full-time job. And I had a three-year-old at home. And so th- by, by, you know, yep. there was all kinds of other circumstances, but my contribution to that uh, failure mm. was chasing those things. Yeah. yeah. I refuse to let that happen yeah. to this current marriage and to this uh, woman who has agreed to live with me for mm. the rest of our lives. And so I'm, I'm again, yeah. a product of failures. I, I can only tell you, don't let it get to that place. Yeah. Mm. That's, yeah. that's where, you know, things are going poorly yeah yeah, yeah that's wow. so good so that good so good so talk about as you spent significant time at citizen citizens energy and then you moved to free g and and that's where i've really known you in the context of our relationship and even gotten to know in the last year that transition for you into the ceo role talk about that transitions of going from being on an executive team being in a high level of leadership and really stepping in and maybe like a, a formative moment a leadership moment that you learned mm-hmm. in that transition um that our listeners could take away and apply and in, in the transition maybe that they're walking through right now mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. So I, I will always speak with affinity about my time at Citizens. Yeah, um, Citizens paid for my education. Mm. They they moved me in all these different places. Uh, they taught me what corporate development was about: mergers, acquisitions, divestitures, new business. Man, I the people there I still love. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff Harrison, the current CEO, wrote me a letter of recommendation for my last you know grad grad school application. They are some just fantastic people. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what happened, uh, I got a taste of corporate development. Um, this is a public charitable trust, operates like a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. And so I found some freedom um, and I actually jumped into one of the new businesses we had created to lead the business. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I kind of, I did a Troubadour uh, event for a little bit. I bounced yeah. around about three different industries um, at the executive level in all those industries. Um, and I found myself at Free G because the owner was looking for someone that he could recruit, kind of develop and mentor. Yeah. And then he had this three to five year plan that he really didn't want to operate the business. Yep. So he wanted to be a chairman of the board. Um, so it was, it was kind of hostile waters. Um, I, I get recruited mm-hmm. to come in as this chief operating mm-hmm. officer. There is a current chief operating officer. There's an executive team. And I spent six months in this interview process and I'm, I'm asking Mike, like, why not one of these guys? Yeah. Uh, wow. And and why am I walking into this? Um, okay, let's try. Yeah. Um, and so we we the 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 entry in um, had to be legitimate humility. Um, mm. you, you, you can't fake it. No. Yeah. Um, people can smell that. They can sniff yes. it real quick. And, and yes. so it, it can't be disingenuous. And so I, the only way I knew how to lead was, hey, I don't know anything about this industry. Yeah. I am forced to depend mm. on learning and, yep. and growing. And um, e- even if I think I know, I'm going to ask questions. Mm. Um, and, and I'm a curious guy. You, you yep. know, I like to ask lots of questions. Um, and so it mm. took some time. Uh, that some things I've learned about leadership is that leadership like trades on the currency of trust. Yes. And so mm-hmm. I, you, you've heard me say, I, the only thing I know how to do to build trust is that say to do ratio. Yep. yep. And so it's built over time. And so if I say it, I do it. If I say it, I do it. Yep. If I say it, I do it. And as long as you keep that ratio, you know, one to one, Yep. people will trust you. Yes. And so it took, mm. it took a little bit of time to build trust and um, there were some backbiting and sniping and things that happened and um, we weathered all that. Yeah. Um, now there are still days uh, that I'm not sure I'm supposed to be the guy. Yeah. So it's still a struggle for me. And this imposter syndrome kind of thing is real. Yes. Um, and, and whenever I start thinking about that, I realize I didn't arrive here on my own merit in the first place. Mm-hmm. Uh, God kind of laid this plan out. And so as long as he's going to keep laying it out, mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit's going to keep equipping me and I'm yep. going to do the best with what I have. That's so good. And I'm going to screw it up today. Yep. And there'll be grace tomorrow yep. as well. Yep. Yeah. So 
So good. And leaders that are listening, like I want to say one thing that Jason gave me very practical out of what he just said is that idea of the say to do ratio. Yeah. And that's one thing I have tried to implement in my leadership. And I actually keep it on my whiteboard in my office. Mm. So if I'm in a meeting and I'm with our team and I say, Hey, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to take this. Yeah. I just put a little tick of the thing that I say I'm going to do. And then I can go back and I've got another side of like, did I actually do that thing so that my team can visibly see Hey, when I say I'm going to do these things for you, yeah. and as I've led this this mm. team for the last year, that has built so much trust with yeah. them. And there are times I've gotten it wrong. I've said I'm going to do it, and yeah. I don't get it done. Yeah. And, and I have to be very honest and transparent about that with them. Um, but that principle right there has been like a game changer in my yeah. leadership. And, and I think it, it doesn't mean say less or do less. Yes. It just right. means capture it, know where you're going to see it. Yep. And then go freaking do it. That's yep. it. And I, I think this is such a great principle because I think there are times probably in my life and leadership where everyone who I was working with would be like, oh yeah, Brandon's delivering, Brandon's delivering, Brandon's delivering. But then maybe in some friendships, I was yeah. under delivering in. Yeah. Maybe in some commitments to my kids or to my wife, I was over promising and under delivering. Yep. And so I think this is a principle regardless of your industry, where you work, your relationship circle, yes, right? Like yes, bring in, yes. in any circle of influence that you have to t carry this, this principle to mean what we say and say what we mean and, and to deliver every single time yeah. to be this um, person that people can bank on. Yes. This, this, and it's a way that we show kindness. It's a way that we show love. It's a way that obviously that trust grows. Right. And uh, man, that, I think that is just like sitting down in that. Um, and if we could, you know, over the next week, <laughs> each mm -hmm. of us finding ways that we're doing that. And, and if you need to capture it in an, the notes app on your phone, yep. if you need, you know, I'm a zero base email guy. So like I need my yeah. inbox at zero. Uh, otherwise I get a little jittery at night. Right. <laughs> so it's like, maybe I just need to write an email to myself because I know I'm going to take care of it then. Right. Yep. I know yeah. there's a plan or I, I put it then in my calendar to go do that thing that yeah. I said I would do by yes. Thursday. Right. Those kind of things. So man, Jason, that is so good. And I would just encourage it. There's some fresh reminders in that for me, but also for, for all of us to sit down on that and, and to, to deliver on that. That's yeah. good, man. Yeah. It's not new education, right? Yeah. It's just that it's applying to things we know. Yeah. Yes. Uh, again, I'm mild intelligence. <laughs> just follow through on the things that we already mm. know. Yeah. Right? That's good, man. Jason, what's it in, in your journey and your journey of, of leadership and how that goes into the marketplace? What, what has it been like? to, you know, lead with the conviction that you have as a kingdom-minded person, as a Jesus-oriented person, right? What does it mean to bring that into the ways in which you work and also to create empathy and space for people who maybe think, believe differently than you? Because I think, um, you know, it's one of the things that as we work, um, our company Switchback, we work with a lot of different small businesses and stuff, and it's one of those tensions that I'm watching people navigate differently right? Yeah. Whether they're in that lead seat or a second chair, whatever it might look like. Hey, how do I bring, this is, I bring my whole person with me, That's right? It. That's Every, it. everywhere I go, I can't separate that. Also, I know, you know, what are those sight lines and lanes to say, Hey, I want to make sure that people don't feel like I'm coming in heavy handed with this, or they need to do what I say, or I'm that I'm just promoting people who, you know, think like me and believe like me and all that kind of stuff. How have you kind of managed that um, and led, you know, uh, in and through that in, in an influential role that you're in and have been in, in, in the years previous and kind of taking that with you, man. Yeah, it's a good question. And I, and I'll tell you that I'm just recently becoming more aware of the power dynamic. And so I still struggle to see myself in the lead seat. Yeah. And so some of the conversations that I used to have more freely peer to peer, I, I have to give a little bit more weight to now yeah. because mm -hmm. I don't want to feel like this is being pressed in on yeah, someone. Yeah. And so, so hopefully the way I lead with that is um, I react a little bit differently. Mm. And so this starts the conversation. And so things that would make you angry uh, still make me angry. Uh, make no mind, I still have flesh. Yeah. And so yeah. it still makes me angry. It's, it's what do I decide to do after that? Yes. And, and hopefully the way I respond, get someone to ask, why did you respond differently? Yeah. Um, and so I'm trying to draw them into a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not trying to build a Christian company. I'd love a company full of Christians. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Yes. Yes. Um, I don't need this to be a sales yes. pitch. I don't need this to be a marketing yes. gimmick. I need this to be a company full of people who love Jesus and are flawed human beings. Yeah. Right? And do great quality work in your industry. That's exactly yeah. right. And leave the line on that. That's yeah. exactly right. So 
um, there are open conversations. When someone invites me into a conversation and asks, why are you different? Which I'll give you an example here in just a minute. Why are you different? I take that as the invitation to say, hey, this thing that, that uh, Jesus provides, um, I, I'm no different than you, flesh to flesh. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the grace and the things that Jesus did for me that, that give me a different outlook on life and that allow me to react differently. Yeah. Yeah. I still feel all the emotions. Mm-hmm. We are still humans living this human experience in the same environment that seems crazy and chaotic. My hope is in Jesus. Yep. My hope is not in the environment around yeah. me. So an example of this would be, I was walking down the hallway just last week and the HR manager, she says, Hey, stop for a minute. She said, um, what's different? I said, what do you mean? She said, you've just been really lighter the last couple of weeks. Mm. I said, Hey, you know, it's a great question. Mm. Now she's invited me in. So I'm going to answer mm-hmm. it. Said, I heard this great sermon from Ryan Bramlett and he was talking about getting rid of hurry. And so it led me to read the book and I can tell you about that later, but there's two things. I'm I, again, I'm a simple guy. Mm-hmm. Give me a short amount of things to do yep, yep. and let's do them well. Yeah. Two things. Um, I'm listening to worship music. I'm out driving and drive out just to set the tone. And two, when I feel the emotion rise up in my gut, I'm saying, don't be in a hurry. I, mm-hmm. I'm not kidding you. That's the two things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it changes the way I'm mm-hmm. reacting and people are asking why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so all I'm doing is saying, Hey, this hurry gets me nowhere. It gets me nowhere. Yep. Well, and I think that's so interesting because I think there's a lot of times in my life and leadership, there's some things I noticed in the last month that I'm like, a problem would arise and I'm like, we need to squash it quickly. Right. And in squashing it quickly, usually I'm missing something Yep. Mm -hmm. or I'm going to be hurting someone. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, my tone, the way that I'm doing it, the, 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 the speed in which it has to be done because there's something in me, it's like, this is wrong. It needs to be made right. Yes. Let's do it. And, and better is do it quickly. It, it, whereas sometimes if you let it breathe, someone else will solve it yep. or, or the, the answer will be in the room somewhere else or, or it's, Oh, maybe I misunderstood and it wasn't that big of a problem. Yeah. And then, um, Oh, you're in my way. So now you're my problem. You just answered your question about how to get some of these things off your plate. Yeah. Uh-huh. If you give them room to breathe and let someone else solve them, they're growing you're doing less and you're stepping back into the things only you can do. Yeah. yeah. The most painful yeah. demonstration of what you're saying for me has been my wife is in a fairly new leadership role last 12 or 18 months. Yeah. Um, and as she experiences some of these things that I've gone through in the last 25 years of leading yeah. people, my initial gut reaction was to fix things and, and like give her all this advice. Um, and I'm going to tell you, Brandon, it's not like I hear God's audible voice, but I know clearly he told me you are robbing her from the, from the growth that I'm trying to yeah. provide. Yeah. And, and it, and it, it kills you to watch someone mm. you love take these kidney yep. shots and these yep. wounds yeah. that you know what goes on and you know how to prevent some of them. Yeah. And then I, I hear God telling me, you need to let, do you trust her to me? Mm. Do, do you trust that I'm going to lead her the right direction? Yeah. I'm yeah. like, oh Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the other thing in what you said I want to go back to is like the the two things that you mentioned that you implemented are so simple. So simple. And I think there's times that we can get like way over complicated of, oh, this problem arose. I need a process for this. I need a system for this that's going to fix it. And I think we can just over complicate the solution rather than taking a minute, taking a breath, slowing down and stepping back and saying, what are one or two simple things that I could change in my rhythm, in my day, in my flow that are maybe going to correct this Mm. on its own. Um, And I think just in, in the fast paced world that we live and in the fast pacedness of leadership, we feel like we've got to throw another system, another tool. And I, I love really good systems and tools. Like don't hear me say anything different, but sometimes it's just the simplest thing of changing what 10 minutes of your day looks like that can drastically change how you show up at whatever it is that you're showing up for. Yeah. I think, I think we often confuse um, something that's easy with something that's simple. Yes. Two different things. And those are so different, right? Um, there are things that are easy, right? But there's also, there are things that might be, oh, this is a, um, a long ongoing problem, but there's a simple solution. It's just going to take time. That's yeah. right. Like as simple as, you know, Hey, here's three questions for someone that you're developing to ask them every other week yep. and just focus on them for 30 minutes. That's it. Let them take it wherever they want to take it. You want to talk about, then you can, oh, are we having conversations about development? Yes two times a month, 
three questions. You know, it's it's very simple. Do you yeah. know what I do with my one on one check ins weekly? I ask three questions. It's awesome. What are you What are you working on this week? Mm. What'd you work on last week? Are there barriers that I can help get out of your way? That's it. And let them go. Let them go. Let them yep. let them riff on whatever they. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's good, man. So good. So, Jason, as we start to close out this episode, um, what are some books, podcasts? I know you've said that you are a self-proclaimed podcast junkie. Yeah. Uh, so what are some books or podcasts that you're listening to right now that are just really changing the way that you're showing up? So this is going to be a repeat because I do listen to your podcast, which is fantastic, by the way. Thank you. Hopefully we didn't bring the ratings down with me here. <laughs> but, but I really, uh, you know, uh, John Mark Comer, I was just talking about the ruthless elimination of hurry. Yeah. Man, it's changing my, my world. Mm. I'm intentionally trying not to hurry through the book. So I am, you know, 120 pages in mm. and uh, it's, it's just making big changes. Yeah. Mm. I will tell you an explicit book if you're interested um, I'm all about grit. I know Angela Duckworth wrote, literally wrote the book on grit, mm -hmm. but there's a guy named David Goggins and he wrote a book called can't hurt me. Mm. Um, I listened to it three times on an audiobook while training for Leadville. Mm -hmm. Quick, quick story. He was there the same time I was. And I had mm. no idea. Wow. So I run this 40 miles, you climb this mountain and I'm at the top of the mountain sitting on my rear end, like feeling really sorry for myself. And I hear his voice. He's coming back up over the mountain from the other side. I hear him yelling at his guy to go get his water bottles. I'm like, oh, man, I got to get back up on my feet. That's David Goggins. <laughs> and so this giant Hercules man comes running up over the thing. And so his book, Can't Hurt Me, it's, it has some explicit language. But if you listen to it on audiobook, it is just a, I mean, it is a fantastic tale of grit, determination, and mm -hmm. just the three in you will love the book. Mm -hmm. The three so in you good. will love the yeah. book. Yeah. Well, and can we also good. just like camp on the fact that you just said you ran 40 miles yeah, just casually just yeah. and, and then the went up a mountain. And then just up yeah. Mountain, so no this grit, that thing that I like to do, um, I've, I've ran these hundred mile races. And so this one is in Leadville, Colorado. Uh -huh. Um, and it starts at about 11,500 feet. Oof. You run about roughly 40 miles and you go up over this mountain called hope pass. Yep. Mm. It's 14,000 feet. The way they get supplies up to the top of the mountain for the aid station is on llamas. I'll show you some pictures. <laughs> wow. Oh, my. That's the only way. There's no road up there. There's nothing else. And so you wow. go up over that mountain. You go out to a turnaround point, and you come back and go back up the mountain. No. And come down again. The only reason I know about Leadville is because the, the guy's group that I'm in, there's a guy in our group who has talked a ton about it. And it's like, that's his dream one day is to run it. And I was like, I will be at the the start line and I will cheer you on. And then I will see you in like 200 hours whenever you cross the finish line. There's a great breakfast place in the town of Leadville. Okay. That has the best breakfast burrito. You have. So just wait for him there. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. You know, they probably need someone to film it. You yeah. Know? You could come in with a drone, you know, do the thing. Right. right? Yes. Like Bring this. all my yes. skills. Like all this. your artistic ability. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is awesome. Jason, how do people find you get involved or aware of some of the things that you're doing connect with you, man. Yeah. So I've heard all these fantastic guests you have and they've got all these websites and everything and I'm old Brandon. Um, <laughs> and so you'll either find me at my house, uh, with my wife where I don't want to be found mm -hmm. or more likely probably at my church at Churches mm -hmm. point, um, where I love serving. I love getting in kind of any spots. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. Yeah. I'm on a little bit on social media, but I'm more of a purveyor. I don't really put anything out yeah. there. Um, so come find me in person. Yeah. Um, I like face to face conversations. Yeah. I like coffee, mm -hmm. uh, and I like hanging out and I'm okay. always happy to tell you about all the things I've jacked up. So yeah. it's good. It's so good, man. Well, we just want to say thanks. Thanks for taking time out of your busy work week to come hang out with us two knuckleheads. And I mean, just, I didn't know your story, right? So this has just been so, uh, nourishing, enriching, helpful, some practical things I'm walking away with, thinking through reminders from the past. And I know it's going to help our, our listeners. So thank you so much for coming in today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And we would love for you to continue to join us on the journey of the four everyday leaders podcast by Wayfinders. You can subscribe to the podcast on Apple podcasts, Spotify, anchor, and YouTube. Jason, dude, thanks so much for being here with us today. I so appreciate it. And this was such a life-giving conversation. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate it.